Hey everybody, welcome to a new series for the channel, Dead in Bermuda. There's a bit of a trailing A over here you can see, so I'm trying to be wise about it. But it's really just called Dead in Bermuda. If you're wondering, however, what is Dead in Bermuda? Very good question. Um, if you're familiar with the channel, Falcon happens to love survivor games. This is exactly a survivor sim management game. However, unlike any most of the games that we've been covering recently, and a lot of the more popular ones, it's not a post-apocalyptic one. This is actually you're stranded in an island, hence Bermuda, after your plane crashed from one area to the other one. So it kind of has a little bit of a Lost type of influence in there, especially with some of the characters are kind of like homages to characters from Lost, which I'm a sucker for because I enjoyed Lost for... However wacky Lost got over time, I still love the very first season and I love John Locke. And there's a dude in here that reminds me completely of John Locke, so that's always a plus. Anyway, uh, instead of talking more about the game, let's actually show you and get it underway over here. Let's go into New Game and get this under the row here. We might have to delete a save here. I've been playing a lot of this off camera, so I do know what I'm doing. But after a certain amount of days, you are going to start struggling, so just keep that in mind. Uh, okay, and there's going to be a little bit of a cutscene here, which I will shut up for, even though there's no actual dialogue, but, you know. Have fun. Alright, this is my cue to actually step back in. Hey everyone, let's regroup and talk a bit. We have Alice over here. Thank you everyone for helping making a camp. That's heartwarming to see we are sticking together after the, you know, the horror that happened. Let's take a moment to introduce ourselves, since we may live together for a while now. I'm Alice, 45, and this is my husband, Robert. We come from Montreal. I love hiking and cooking. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Bob, guys. Don't know what to say? I like to tinker a bit at home. Oh, and going fishing on Sundays. Really important to remember. Okay, thanks. So my name is Alejandro. I'm 32. You don't know me, I think. I was the manager at the holiday resort you were staying in. It was my flight to my first holidays in 10 years. So yeah, this guy's first um, trip out of the country was a crash. That's terrible luck, Alejandro. We have Winters. I'm Dr. Bettany Winters, 28, coming from London. If you need any medical help, come see me. We have Yuri, he's not much of a talker. Ileana, er, my dad doesn't speak much. Please excuse him. I'm Ileana, 16, we're coming from a small village in Russia. Ah, and Julia married my dad last summer. Hello, everything's already said. Don't expect me to reveal my age, or I should have to silence you forever. That should be should right there. Again, there's a few grammar issues now and then. I don't believe that the uh, developers are... I'm pretty sure English is like their second language, so there's a few grammars here and there. Nothing that's going to really detract from the game, but just keep a heads out for it. And more, it's more than likely something that will be taken care of when the game actually releases to the public on the 27th. Maybe. And here we go. This is the dude that's John Locke. Number one, he's called Jacob. If you're familiar with Lost, you would know who Jacob is or was, whichever way you want to go with that one. But his whole character actually looks like John Locke, too. I mean, of course, John was bald, but I mean his attire. You'll see what I mean pretty soon, though. Are we finished? We are wasting precious time. We must organize ourselves. I'm Jacob, and I know how to survive in a hostile environment. I've been preparing for this eventuality all my life. I love that line right there, because again, as I mentioned, that's John Locke, man. Fangirling out a little bit over here. Jacob, while all of you were uselessly crying, I went around and found a large water tank containing clear water and enough resources to make a fire. Again, he's already taking control and keeping everyone alive. I love that guy. Uh, you're right, Jacob. But before that, I suggest that we take a moment of silence in the honor of those who didn't survive the crash. They will haunt my nights until I leave this world. It's kind of like the pilot episode of Lost, too, right? All right, so discussion results. We got ten wood. <laughs> don't we? Don't we always? Two stone, one tinder, and everybody's depression went up to twenty. So this is because of the whole fact that they crash landed here, and there's a bunch of dead bodies around that they have to kind of dispose of first and foremost here. Welcome to Bermuda. This is a camp view where you can assign characters to activities they will perform during the day. You can move your mouse left and right to view all the camp. Characters are assigned action slots. Right now they're assigned to the fire camp's action slots, which is talk. To move a character, you can either drag and drop them to a new slot or right click them. 
So essentially it's telling you how to play the game over here. For day one, it's going to be tutorialized this way. I'm going to try to speed it up a bit because I do know how it works already, so I don't necessarily have to be handheld for it. But um, I'm going to leave this portion in just so you can kind of get a better feel for it. Especially for those of you that actually appreciate to read these things to, um, for your own accord. So, let's see. Our first order of business here is to move a character to scavenge. Great. This is where you take a look at your character drop skills here. So, when I mentioned people were telling you, or at least explaining what they were good at before they crash landed here, that was all fine and dandy, but if you don't remember that, you could always go to skills, and it'll tell you everything about everybody. So, for instance, Alejandro, we have 50 strength, agility 40, constitution 50, fighting 41. The physical stats over here are going to be used to dictate your fatigue per uh, job that you do. But yeah, this will tell you who's good at what. Right now we need a scavenger. I think the best scavenger off the bat is usually Yuri, right? He's 55 and Alejandro's 49. Now I would go with Yuri, but the problem is that he's also really good at crafting and I'm going to use him to craft as a matter of fact. So I'm going to basically sacrifice six scavenging points for crafting to be higher for us because crafting is going to be really important in this game as well. So I'm going to be using Alejandro as our scavenger. Now I'm pretty sure the game will tell us this right now, but using Alejandro over here to scavenge this character will search the crash site for useful resources, but beware, seeing the dead passenger's corpses will increase his depression state. There are five states in the game, hunger, depression, sickness, injury, and fatigue. If any one of them reach 100, the related character will die. So yeah, it, it did a good job explaining that to us. So, every t you'll be able to scavenge this plane a total of 12 times throughout the course of the game. After 12 times, you can no longer scavenge it for items, and as you go further and further into the game and scavenge it more and more, you'll find less and less items. So early on, expect to find a lot, but maybe around 5, 4, 3 leftover scavenges. You're not going to find much, so keep that in mind, and also be sure to plan ahead for what you're going to be using in terms of resources. So he's going to be doing that. Now, right now we have to assign, what, two people over to the library for researching. This will be where you unlock new recipes to actually have people work on the workshop to craft those things. So, I think the first one you're going to be doing is maybe the campsite, if I'm right here. But we need two people for um, knowledge base, because, let's see here. I'm going to grab Ileana because I'm aware she's already good at knowledge. So, I'm going to move her over here. Knowledge is 56. So, each one of these things that you assign people to is going to have a required thing that's going to be the primary function for it. So for crafting, you would need the crafting skill. For research, you would need knowledge, etc, etc. She's a really good knowledge person at 56, so I'll use her. And I'm also going to be using, oddly enough, John Locke over here. Oh yeah, look at this attire. Look at this attire over here. Tell me that's not John Locke. That's goddamn John Locke right there. Green shirt and everything. Pants over here, the brown ones. <laughs> anyway, um, you come over here. Knowledge 65. So he's going to be one of my research people along with Eliana. Alright, so these characters will search for new crafting plants. Once the progress gauge reaches 100, you will discover a new recipe. The efficiency of every task is tied to a specific skill, which is what I just discussed right now. So for the explorer, since I already kind of know who I'm going to be using, I'm going to have Julie over here. By the way, me knowing what I'm using or who I'm going to be using for what does not guarantee my survival after a while. I just know how to start off early pretty decent, but, um, you know, down the line, it's going to get really difficult. For scavenging or exploring, I'm going to use all the three girls over here. Boomski. Alrighty, so now we need to make a fire. So, for the fire, we have to go over to the workshop and set up a recipe for ourselves here because we need fire to keep ourselves warm and also keep any sort of beast away at night time. If your fire completely goes off, I'm pretty sure it's game over, although I've never had it happen to me, but I'm pretty sure it might be. Uh, luckily, the game did afford us with the items required for the fire camp right off the bat, so there we go. We'll do that. Craft it. Okay. Now we need somebody to actually make that for us, so we need two crafters. And we're going to be using the leftover dudes, which happen to be the best ones. Bob, crafting 40, and then Yuri. The reason why I kept Yuri from scavenging, even though he's better, is because he's a better crafter. So let's go ahead and skip forward. Now here's going to be our very first portion of the whole phase one. Everybody that you assign a task to will be actually doing that task through phase one. You could actually make this go faster by clicking over here to fast forward. But for the purpose of this very first episode, I'll actually teach you a bit of things. I'm going to let it go on regular time here. So right now, they're using up the items to start working on the fire camp. And that's already going to be done. Great. Once you actually make an item, it'll instantly appear. And you can now use it for whatever you need to use it for. So fire camp's the first one. And again, every single time that you do this, you have a chance of getting tired, which is going to happen pretty often. And again, that's going to be dictated based on the stat, the physical stat that relates to that, I guess, activity. So... 
Say you're crafting, that's only requires strength. The more strength you have, the less tired you get doing it, the less you have to rest, the less time you're wasting, because time is going to be of the essence in this game. Select that, we have all the items required for it, because it's tutorial still, so there you go. Excellent. Now we need to convert some fruits into water. Luckily, John Locke did find this over here for us. He'll be able to break down fruit down into water. Now, as you can see over here, they'll be actually consuming one water per day each one. We have eight people. That means eight water per day is going to be our, our daily usage, essentially. If you convert fruit into water, you have a chance of getting three to five per use. So let's see how much we get here. Three, three, four. So we didn't get the max one there, and that's going to be randomized. You can't really alter this decision at all, but you could alter some other ones down the line. All right, great. What else do you want me to talk about, game? I'll do it, believe me. I'll, I'll teach you how to play a game. How about that? Move at least two characters to the talk slots. This will be the depression that I talked about. So remember, everybody hit, got hit with a 20 depression right off the bat because we crash landed. Everybody had to do their own thing. So now it's up to us to find out who's going to be the one discussing. Now, for... Taking care of depression, you have to make sure that their discussion stat is a bit high. Uh, you don't have to make sure that's the case here, but if the higher the discussion stat is, the more you would decrease the depression state that they're in. So right now what I'm going to do is, let's see, who's more depressed? Everybody's at 20. Alejandro needs one because he... Uh, remember, he's scavenging through the plane, so he's finding a lot of dead bodies, which is actually having an impact on his mental health. I do believe we have enough food for this one, and you don't really want to scavenge the plane right off the bat initially, like 11 days straight. Don't do that. Space it out. Only scavenge the plane when you need it because food will deteriorate over time, which is something that I haven't talked about, and we will. So Alejandro, you come over here. Boom. Next in line, we need somebody... What's his discussion skill? 62? 62, yeah. So he's got some pretty decent discussion. The other person that's really good at discussion, I'm pretty sure, is Ileana. So them together, we should be able to do something really good right there. Great. Now, right here is telling us about items. You will be finding items in this game which will let you increase certain stats, decrease certain effects, and coffee is one of them. This will actually let you clear up 10 fatigue and 10 depression. So, have this coffee, so it will lower you to 8 and down to 18. Meaning, you know what? I'm not even going to have them talk. I'm going to have them go back to work then. Alright, we also discovered a new area when I sent the girls out to scavenge. Now, the area is going to be something completely different from the game. This you have to do by yourself. And you don't necessarily have to go to this area once you unlock it. You can do it whenever you're ready. But all this is going to be actually based on your character's stats yet again. So, for instance, right now we have a moist suitcase. We have Inspect over here. You find a suitcase certainly coming from your plane crash. Does it belong to anyone who survived? Does it matter anymore? So, that's our inspection here. We can do a search. Now, for searching... We want somebody that's really good at scavenging. This will usually tell you what's the stat that you should be really looking forward to send somebody out with to do a certain event. So right now we're looking for good for scavenging. So it's also going to tell you things like injury, fighting, and stealth. It's really important, by the way. I'm going to be using Yuri because I want to show off what happens when you have low stealth here. So we we'll use Yuri. There's a stealth check. You're wondering why is that there? Monster attack! There's going to be some random events like this every single time when you're out here where you have to bypass a stealth check. And if you bypass it, you're fine. If you fail it, you get hurt and you start building up injuries which you have to take care of over time because it will either kill you or diminish your overall stance as well. But in doing so, he'll be able to actually level up his stealth uh, skill as well. So the more you do something, the more you will level it up. So it's kind of a trade-off. Injury for some leveling right there. And he found some items for us, which is great. So that's all we found in that one area right there, and now it's telling us to do the Day 2 portion. So, let's go ahead and hit Next over here. 8 wood, 5 rope, 4 tasty meals, 2 meals, 5 fruit, axe is great, we needed that axe too, and we have some tools over here as well. Alright, we can now do this um, click to fast forward so we can kind of progress this a bit faster. So now they're using up the items that we have here to start working on the sleeping area. And they had a pretty good time together, so they got a plus 3 to affinity to each other. Let's see how John Locke and Ileana actually fare over here together. Plus 8 and plus 4. Good. Good on you guys. Now the ladies over here, depression going down because they're talking it out. And fatigue goes down a little bit too. Perfect. And I got a new trade already with um, Julia. This will happen randomly as well, usually by triggering talks though it does seem. But she has Thief, which actually increases her stealth skill to progress two times fast, which is pretty good because she has a pretty decent stealth skill already. So that's going to be pretty decent for us. But they had a little bit of an argument there, so negative 9 to their affinity to each other. And I love Alice. She's really amazing in terms of um, exploring and also harvesting, which we'll get into way later on. 
Okay, good work, everyone. I know it's hard, but we managed to scavenge some food in that damn plane. I'm sure there is more if we continue to search the place. But it will only last for a few days. After that, we will be on our own. Anyone who knows how to hunt? I do, but not with my bare hands. We need to find or craft some tools. Let's share the food we found right now. We should ration our daily meals. And water, too. An average man dies after only three days without water. A frightening thought. Don't worry, we can make juice out of fruits. The island is covered in jungle. We'll find plenty. Yes, that was a good idea you had today, Ileana. We'll need plenty of those if we want to survive until help comes. What help? We should at least try to reach the jungle. Maybe someone lives here. Yes, and if we find a big tiger, we're dead. Well, tomorrow's another day. Good night, everyone. Good night, Alice. <laughs> now, the game will tell you right now what this is going to be for. Actually, I'll just read it because it probably does a better job explaining this part than I would. Each night, or almost, your characters will chat with each other. There are conditions to trigger these dialogues and randomize the elements, so you won't have the same dialogues with each new game. You must now share the food between your characters, so essentially, based on their stats, their affinity to each other, and what you're having them do, you'll have different type of dialogues each time you play the game again, so it's not going to be the same story over and over, which is really cool. So now we have to feed people. Now over here, we have um, perishable food. What's going to work out over here, the game will teach us afterwards, but I'll just take care of it now is that these meals right here have a chance of degrading each and every day you don't use them. Not all of them, but there's a chance that a few of them will degrade. So for instance, this here, the medium level one, will drop down to barely eatable, and then the amazing one will drop down to this one, etc, etc. So this is non-perishable. This right here you can stock up on over and over and over. You don't have to worry about it going bad, but again, fruit's going to be used for water. This is going to be dried meat, which is something you find over time, and you might be able to make it as well once you open up the right station for it, if I'm right here. Giving a few meals to maybe John Locke over here, and I'm going to say Winters. Everybody else is, I think, for the most part, I'm going to use one on Alice too, and that's about it. I'm going to probably use some water, to be honest with you, to lower these guys a little bit. It's not a good idea to get everybody at zero instantly. Make sure that you're rationing your food properly. I'm going to save one water for, or one fruit for water. That's fine. Make sure that you're rationing this properly because um, it's something you could easily just be like, yeah, let me just hit everybody on zero, and then later on you're struggling with food. So right now our fire intensity went down to 73. Water supplies we had eight because we have eight people. Each one uses one water per day, so we're down to 52. And five of our eight tasty meals degraded into meals, and then two of our four meals degraded into barely edible stuff, which is what I just talked about right now. Alright you guys, I'm going to wrap it up here for today. Uh, I do apologize for the more tutorial approach for this episode. It was just to kind of get you an understanding as to how the game plays, but going forward from here on out, back to usual business with Falcon, no more tutorializing, just get some gameplay done, making some bonehead decisions that people get mad about, you know, the usual. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up, I will catch you next time.